Hello everybody and welcome, my name is Eric and today as the title says, I'm going to be talking about beginner tips for foldable inflatable boats. Let's get right to it. Okay guys, uh, if you guys are here for the first time on my channel, welcome and for those of you who are returning, welcome as well. Thank you for coming by and there's a few topics I'm going to go over three main topics. Uh, we're going to talk about the different models that are available out on the market. Uh, for ex uh, for today, for this specific video, I will be using the Saturn Inflatables and Boats2Go.com website as examples to show you guys what kind of models are out there. I'm also going to talk about registration, which is very important. If you happen to buy one that actually has a transom with an outboard like, like I do, and also I'm gonna talk about a few accessories for mainly ease of use. Basically some accessories that'll make your uh, boating experience easier, storing it, putting it away, going into the water and things of that nature. Now, I cannot go over every single detail in specific videos, but I have made two other videos. One video that I go over assembly, putting together in storage and also cleaning. I will put those two videos in the description below. I'll put them on the screen somewhere for your convenience, so yeah. Let's get started. Now, finding your the right boat for you, um, the idea, I'm gonna show you guys different models. What I'm hoping to achieve with this is that you buy the first model and that's the one you keep. You know, that way you don't have to you know move up, you, you buy the right one. So you don't overbuy or, or underbuy. You have inflatable kayaks. If you just want an inflatable kayak, I, I'll show you a picture and, and a specific model number. And there's the kaboats. So it's like really, really cool. Kaboats combine some aspects of an inflatable boat and a kayak, put it together with a tram so you can actually have a motor. You could paddle with it, or you can do both. Just leave the motor on idle while you paddle and paddle assist, that way you don't get too tired, which is really cool. Then you have something a little bit higher. There's, there's bigger kaboats, like the CK430, it's one of my favorites. Um, the CK430 is almost as wide as my personal inflatable boat, which, by the way, this is a Saturn BB290. It's like a little Mazda MX-5 Miata. It's, a, it's not super big, not super small. It's, it's a cool little sports car. But anyway, that's just referencing to that. Then you have the actual inflatable boats, like this one. The BB290, you got the SD330, which is a great all-rounder, by the way. Um, then you have the catamarans as well. Uh, let's see, what else other, other, other models are there? You can actually get inflatable um, uh, SUPs, which is basically paddle boards. I mean, there's a huge array of different models. And the material that these are made out of, 1100 denier reinforced PVC, a mouthful. But it's a fancy word of very, very tough rubber sandwiching in some fibers all together that creates a very tough surface. This one does not have any an aluminum or wood floor. It actually has an inflatable floor. I'll show you. The surface right here, this is the inflatable floor. Very tough. And I didn't inflate it fully. See, this floor uses about 10 PSI. My personal preference is nine, which is, I like it when I go on the water to kind of maneuver itself on the water a little bit. I don't want it to be too tough. That's just my personal taste. So yeah, this is quite tough. This next part I'm going to talk about in this video is probably the most important is to determine what do you want an inflatable floor, uh, inflatable boat for. Are you going to be carrying your family? Are you going to be being friends in your fishing trips? Or are you going to be by yourself? I myself tend to ride by myself most of the time. So this is the reason why I got this specific model. It's 9.6 feet long. It's not very heavy. It's easy for me to actually pick up and carry, put it in the car. I use a hand truck to store it. So you got to determine what you're going to use it for because it plays a big role. And also, are you planning to have it on a trailer or are you planning to actually, like I do, fold it up, slip it in. I got a Prius right here next to me. It's a Toyota Prius, puts it all in there. Those play a big role because weight, mainly weight. If you're going to be by yourself most of the time, I don't recommend getting anything bigger than probably 11 feet. Unless you get the CK430, that's an exception. Those type, that type of model is um, a li little bit more narrow and it's built lighter and although it's longer in more space, that's, I will say that's an exception with that specific model because it's easier for you to pick up and, and handle. You, do, you might not want to have it on the roof. Maybe you don't want a trailer. So this is, you have to consider what you plan to do it. 
because you don't want to get something too big and then you're going to regret it. You're like, oh, this thing is too heavy. Or you even buy an outboard, which I did. I bought a 9.9 .9 Mercury outboard. Eventually, I got tired of it. I mean, it was powerful. It was nice, but it was just too heavy. You have to consider those aspects. Weight plays a big role, whether you're going to be by yourself or with family, and you got different sizes. Now, if you plan to have a trailer, go nuts. You don't have to worry about weight, really, because you're, the trailer is going to be handling most of the weight, most of the, you know, grunt work, if you want to call it. But if you're going to be by yourself, carrying it like I do, storing it in and putting it inside your house or your storage shed, things like that, consider weight. Try not to get anything bigger than 100 pounds if you can, all right? And uh, in the website, the to go.com, you will notice that they have the specifications of each model. Uh, hopefully, whichever one you personally buy, whatever, whatever brand it may be, it'll give you some specifications that you can use to purchase the right one. So that's another tip. Next, we're going to talk about registration. Wherever you purchase your uh, inflatable boat, whether it's boats2go.com, eBay, Amazon, whichever it is, you're going to need the receipt and a bill of sale. I will show you guys a little example of what a bill of sale looks like, especially from both from specifically what I mean to say from boats2go.com. This is what I used. You will need your receipt. You will need a bill of sale, which you fill in the uh, the VIN number that they these come with, your name, address. If you use an outboard or inboard, you will take it to the DM, to the DMV. And uh, depending, if you already pay taxes, maybe like twenty bucks to register it. If you have to pay taxes, depending on the price, then you have to pay the twenty dollars plus the additional of taxes, of course. Now, <clears throat> registration. <laughs> That's the funny part because I actually got away with this for a while. You see here my outboard I put in all the letters and I have the registration sticker here I got away with that for a little while but I keep getting stopped by the Coast Guard giving me warnings they never gave me a ticket because I was legal in a way you know I, it was registered they had the numbers and all that but what they do require is for you to have something like this you want to actually get a small little actually tablet of this matter you can actually purchase one on Amazon I'll put a link below or you can actually have one makeshift as a matter of fact and this actually goes into the side. They want you to display your numbers on the side. So I'm going to tie this right here. Bring you guys over. The Coast Guard want you to have this in specific. They want you to display your numbers on the left-hand side of the boat. I mean, again, like I mentioned earlier, I got away with that. But it's, that's not, not what they want. They gave me a last warning about a couple of weeks ago. I was on Clearwater Beach. And they were nice, you know, they, they saw that I was registered, but they, they insisted that to go legal. So make sure you do that. Again, you can actually either have that makeshift. You can make it on your own if you're crafty with your hands. If you want to buy it, I'll put a link below where I got that one, Amazon. So yeah, that is registration. Now, this next part of the video is about accessories for ease of use mainly. There's tons of accessories out there. But the ones that I'm going to mainly talk about, I tend to be a, somewhat of a minimalist. I don't like to buy too much stuff if I don't need to. That's just the way I am. So I buy the stuff that I actually need. Let's go over that. First, the seat cover. If you buy an inflatable like this one, they usually come with alu aluminum seats. I mean, you can, so there are some folks who remove the aluminum seats entirely and they just sit on the bladder. They do, but I don't do that. I purchased this little seat cover. It has a bit of a cushion. It protects your bum <laughs> and it makes it a lot easier when you go in the water for hours and hours that way you don't, you're not be hurting too much next transom wheels i will be completely honest these save my life it's just it's so much easier to have transom wheels can you, you can just put the outboard and the uh, this is a 15 inch uh shaft outboard see there's clearings for the outboard you can roll it around and i'll show you how, how that looks check it out on the front, it just rolls. See, now you can take it to the water a lot easier. The next accessory is the electric inflatable pump. Now, most, uh, if not all, inflatable boats come with their own SUP pump for high pressure. Now, if you plan on having your boat on a trailer, chances are. You're not gonna be a weekend warrior that has to inflate and deflate like I do. Whenever I go into the water, every weekend I have to inflate it. Once I'm done, I deflate it, put it in the car and take it back. Having an electric pump in that specific scenario, it is priceless because pumping the PS, proper PSI on these bladders and the floor can take a lot of work. You're talking about 30, 40 minutes, easy. With an electric pump, 
10 minutes and you don't have to do the work so i'll put some links on that if you guys want to look into it there are some that you require requires a battery like this one i have an external battery or you can use the battery of your car a 12 volt battery some have the um, 12 volt adapter that plugs inside your car um the, there's, there's quite a few. I'm going to put as many as I can for your convenience. There are some folks that use a very cheap Coleman inflatable, uh, infl inflator, I believe. They use that one to inflate the bulk, and then they use the hand pump to finish up the high pressure. That's also a very economic reason Austin here to go with if you're, if you're in a budget. So, yeah. <laughs> Next accessory is a hand truck and some straps. If you plan, again, like I mentioned earlier, if you're like me, if you're going to be a weekend warrior that inflates and deflates your boat, having a hand truck is very, very handy. Because all you got to do is roll it up, put it in the in the hand truck, tie it up, and just bring it in and store it. Makes it easier. And then when you want to use it, you take it, roll it out. put it. I usually put it near the trunk of my car. I inflate the lift back on my car, and then I just untie it, pick it up. There's minimal, minimal time where I'm going to be using a lot of physical force, which is very nice. I'm not that old, but not that young either. So I like to keep my back as healthy as I can. <laughs> Next, if you have an outboard, having an outboard stand, it is incredibly, incredibly useful. And as I mentioned, if you happen to have a trailer, chances are you're going to leave the motor and the boat in the trailer. So you probably won't need this. But again, if you're a weekend warrior like me, inflates, deflates, having a, a stand also makes it a lot easier for storage. And lastly, for safety, make sure you actually get yourself a nice safety jacket. It's uh, imperative. Um, you might not, you might you might think you might not need it, but when you start going into the ocean and you start I, and you, the water gets really really choppy, hopefully you don't fall off. But if you ever do, you have this. And also, make sure you wear, wear your lanyard on your hand, the shut off lanyard, the shut off switch, in case you fall in. You know, if something happens as you're in really choppy water and you get spit it out on your boat. So this goes like this and turns off the engine. That way, your boat doesn't run away. Already happened to me with an electrical motor a while back. Long story short, I had to swim to it. It kept running around. It kept doing circles around me. So I ended up swimming on its path and grabbing it. Now, that was some fun. I'll be honest. <laughs> Well, we're reaching at the end of this video, guys. And I went over with you guys the different sizes and models that are out there. There's a multitude of them. I just, I'm just giving you some examples that will help you. And using both to gold.com as an example, we talk about registration and some of the accessories that are actually uh, help you of e uh, make, make your experience easier. So make sure you don't try to do your best to your research this video and others so you don't overbuy or don't underbuy. Weight plays a big role. If you're going to be by yourself or not using a trailer, if you're using a trailer, weight is not really a big issue. And keep in mind that each of these boats have their own rating. Some can handle a six horsepower outboard. Some can handle 10, 20 and 30 and 40, especially the really, 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 really big ones. I'll show you guys a quick picture. One of the SD models, which I forgot the name, uh, SD six cent something. They're really big. They're massive. The, these are the ones usually used on com for commercial purposes, you know, uh, Transferring people from the shore into a yacht, things of that nature. It's just, they're really big. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you happen to have any questions or concerns, please leave a comment below or a question. I'm I'm usually very active, and some of you, I, as you already know, you leave a question, a comment within 24 hours, I get back to you guys. So, again, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Later.